Okay, it's time to get to a game that I've wanted to review for some time. Actually, I was supposed to review it last year, but my personal and professional life took me away from the show for several months, so I never got a chance to do it. That game was Grand Theft Auto V. GTA V took a while for Rockstar to complete, taking more than five years after GTA IV to hit shelves on the PS3 and 360. I won't lie though, I was one of very few that was not overly excited about the game's upcoming release. Seeing previews of the game cast doubt in my mind that Rockstar could fulfill all of the ideas and innovations for the game properly. The game sounded way too big for the PS3 and 360 and I was worried that the game would suffer from a lot of technical flaws that would hinder it greatly. Add to this, the game was not given a release date until under a year before its original release date and wound up being pushed back to September of 2013. But despite my worries, I stood in line like everyone else and picked up a copy of the game on its release date. GTA 5's story is definitely the most unique thus far, expanding on what was established from GTA 3 all the way up to GTA 4. Instead of playing as one main character, you get to play as three, Michael DeSanta, Trevor Phillips and Franklin Clinton. Michael and Trevor are friends and bank robbers, however, after a failed robbery, Trevor believes Michael to be dead and goes into hiding. He then discovers that Michael is actually alive and well, living rather wealthy and with a family. Michael meets a former gangbanger, Franklin Clinton, who is probably the most normal character Rockstar has ever written. Michael, Trevor, and Franklin form a team and pull a bunch of heists that make them very rich. One of Rockstar's biggest accomplishments with this story is juggling the three main characters without making things confusing. Michael and Trevor are very different from the previous main characters that the GTA franchise has introduced. I always thought that was one of the reasons why Franklin was put into the game. Franklin could easily be a character from the previous GTA games, and I think that similarity alone gives you the connection between this game and the previous games, and that was needed, because had the game run off of Trevor and Michael alone, it wouldn't feel like the previous GTA stories at all. Throughout the game, you can frequently switch between each of the main characters, which is actually really fun to do because there are times when you don't know what situation you're going to find one of them in, and it's really fun to see the evolution of the main characters throughout the story. Well, the evolution of Michael and Franklin. Trevor doesn't evolve very much throughout the game personality-wise, but he's actually entertaining that way and is probably the most entertaining character I've ever seen in this franchise. Naturally, the missions are different than the previous installments to fit around the game having three main characters. Each character still has the traditional single character missions that were present in previous installments, but Rockstar has tweaked things quite a bit for this game, making the missions far more story-based than ever before. There's even missions actually being created within the missions. The most startling moment for me in the game actually came quite early, when Franklin is supposed to take a car from Michael's house, and when you think you're close to completing the mission, the mission changed because Michael is hiding in the back seat and points a gun on his head. Stuff like that is so unique and is pulled off very well throughout the game. Also, the heist missions are very unique too, with you having the option to perform the heist differently, whether through stealth or just by storming into the place. The only negative that I have with the story is that, as just a story, it does feel relatively short. The story, without roaming and driving, is about nine hours and some odd minutes long. While that's not necessarily short either, it feels short when you have a game that has three main characters and each have their own stories. The open world is just as entertaining as ever. The game takes place in Los Santos and the countryside of San Andreas with a surprising number of places to go into. Los Santos and the countryside tower over Liberty City in terms of miles and surprisingly, the entire area is open and free to roam from the beginning of the game. Nothing is cut off or needs to be unlocked later on. The entire city is open. However, a world this big does present a flaw, and that's the driving times. The most meaningless, time-consuming drive of the game is Trevor driving from the countryside to Los Santos to locate Michael. That drive was unbelievably annoying. I felt like I was playing Red Dead Redemption with a car. Most of the features that were in GTA 4 make a return. 
changing clothes, cell phones, and a barrage of fun missions to partake in. Also, Rockstar brings back features that were omitted by GTA 4, like haircuts and tattoos. Almost all of the features that were introduced in GTA's past games were expanded on greatly here. The biggest expansion was on cell phones and the internet. Where GTA 4 tested the waters by having you call one or two friends, GTA 5 gives you an entire list that you can create, and you can call almost all of them at any point throughout the game. Some events obviously don't fall well with the story, though. For instance, going from a cutscene that has you in Michael's house arguing with his wife, to all of a sudden being able to call her and meet her on another part of town two seconds later. Some activities I find really cool, like being able to go to a movie theater and actually watch a fairly long short film. I found myself going to the movies quite often in this game. More returning features are being able to buy properties and businesses. However, the businesses play a lot more of a role this time than they ever have before. In fact, depending on where the business is, they can be almost impossible to maintain. For instance, I bought a bar that was all the way out on the countryside, but Trevor was now living in Los Santos. I had to drive beer over to the bar. I was always late on the delivery. Now there is one new feature that I find entirely useless, and that's the stock market. Not that the idea isn't revolutionary for a video game, but it's just incredibly boring. In fact, I didn't even know the option existed until I actually accessed the internet in the game. I can understand trying to be realistic, but you have to draw the line somewhere. Speaking of the in-game internet, this feature was thankfully upgraded. The internet in GTA 4 was an awesome idea, but had so little to offer that it almost looked like Rockstar gave up on the feature midway through. The internet in GTA 5, while not overly realistic to today's version of the internet, is still much more lively than it was in GTA 4. It has more sites to go to, most of the phone numbers found on the internet actually work within the game, which is awesome. The in-game internet does bring back some problems though. For one, searching the internet is still difficult because typing with the regular controller can be very tedious. Secondly, not everything is as accessible as you might think. The internet still doesn't work as freely as many of us were hoping for. From a graphical standpoint, GTA 5 is easily one of the best looking PS3 and 360 games ever created. From the look of the environments all the way down to the textures on the clothing and people. Like I stated before, Los Santos and the countryside tower over Liberty City and this surprised almost everyone because Liberty City was huge in GTA 4. And to have a location bigger and have more accessible areas was unexpected. One of the reasons why this worked for GTA 5 was because Los Santos and the countryside are not as skyscraper heavy. Liberty City, because of all the tall buildings and the tremendous draw distance, was processing hell for the PS3 and the 360. By taking away the skyscrapers and simplifying the design of the city and general traffic of each area, they were able to make Los Santos work very well. The PS3 and 360 do have a couple technical flaws. The frame rate can jump a bit when driving from area to area, but that's really about it. And that's actually really impressive to have this big of a world and have no real technical flaws that hinder any of the gameplay. Then there's the graphics for the PS4 and Xbox One. The Xbox One version is the version that has been playing in this video and is the version that I most recently played for GTA 5. A lot of people have asked if there's truly any difference between the two games besides the graphics, and the simple answer to that, having played both versions, is no. The only real addition to the PS4 and Xbox One is the first-person perspective, and that's really nothing extraordinary when you really look at it, and for me, the first-person perspective is entirely unnecessary for a game like GTA. Now with that being said, the game is nice looking, but I don't think it's enough to make it worth paying another $60 because all you're really getting is a slightly enhanced version of the game you played on the PS3 and 360 for the same damn price you paid for that version one year before. This is nothing new for this generation of gaming so far. Sony and Microsoft have had a much harder time distinguishing the PS4 and Xbox One from the PS3 and 360 than they did for those consoles for the PS2 and Xbox, because the PS3 and 360 already have awesome and realistic graphics. GTA 5 looked gorgeous on the PS3 and 360, and unfortunately, as nice as the PS4 and Xbox One look, it wasn't enough to distinguish it and make it worth having because the game already looked great and ran well on the older consoles. So overall, GTA 5 is simply a classic game and proves why GTA is the best open world gaming franchise on the market. Well everyone, that's it for now. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next time.